Welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar. We're going to get stuck in. I'm sure that you want to find out more and start exploring your options. So, first of all, before we start, check in with yourself. How are you feeling today? Are you comfortable? How are you seated? We're going to start talking for probably about 30 to 40 minutes. Obviously, you can stop the webinar at any time. But it'd be really good to get yourself in a comfortable space with a notebook and a pen and really relax and let your thoughts flow. Here at Another Door, we practice free thinking in a lot of our workshops, and that is creating space for you to do some deeper thinking around what you want, what your ideas are, and tuning into how you're feeling. And that's no different today, so create a nice space where ideas will come to you and you'll feel relaxed. And hopefully at the end, you'll feel re-energized. That's the aim of the game. Okay, let's start. First of all, have a think about where are you right now? Look at these dudes. <laughs> Which one are you right now? Are you feeling a little bit curious, but also not quite sure? A little bit maybe out of comfort zone? Happy though to maybe step into that uncomfortable zone. You know you want change, so you're prepared to go exploring. You're prepared to do things that maybe you've not thought about before or are you feeling a little bit shocked if you have just lost your job then you probably are going through shock and all sorts of different emotions and we're going to explore that later or are you this chap at the end you're eager to go you're saying come on bring the lead take me on a walk show me <laughs> Why is this important? Well, it's important to check in with where you are because that's the foundations for learning. You've got to really understand where you're at. Are you open? Have you got resistance? And you've got to reset and say, okay, it might be all of these things right now, but the one thing I'm bringing is a curious mind and I will do some work. I will ask myself questions. So have a think. Where are you right now? So you're comfortable, you're checking in with your emotions, you know where you're at. Another door is all about when one door closes, it's actually creating opportunity for another door to open. Another door originates from the famous saying from Alexandra Graham Bell. And he said, when one door closes, another door opens. But we so often look so long and so regretfully on the door closed that we do not see the ones which open for us. Certainly when I was made redundant, it felt like that. It felt like doors were closing. I felt panicked. I could only think of the door that was closing. And there was no way that I could push through to think it could be a good thing. I remember the day somebody came up to my desk and said this very quote, don't worry when one door closes. And to be honest, I was not in the mood for it. But it was so true. It just takes time. And the experience that we've created in another door is the time you need. We start right at the very beginning when you're feeling the pain, you're feeling confused. You're not sure which way to go. 
you may be feeling panic. That's where we start and we bring you all the way through the experience. So for us, it's not just about being positive pants and hey, let's make this a good thing. It's not that, it's embracing all of the emotions as we work through what you're going through. We do this by using five steps to thrive. We start in the shock, we move into the feeling of being stuck, we slow down our thinking, we call it slow, slow go, so that when you slow down, allow yourself to get clear, then when you step forward, it can be with more focus and intention. Then you become unstuck. This is the moment you get really planned, you get really focused, you know what you want, and you know that you're going to do what it takes to get there. And then thrive is all about actually, maybe that's not the end, it's just the start. And how do you thrive? How do you help yourself be resilient to keep going when you get the knockback, to keep going when you get rejection and failure? Because actually, thriving is all about that. So, another door foundations are all based on the five steps to thrive. I'm Eleanor Tweddle, I'm the founder of Another Door. I wrote the book, Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You When I Lost My Job. It actually started as a blog. I had no idea what I was doing. I had just left a corporate job through redundancy. I really was enjoying that job, so it wasn't like I was looking for something new, but it was a sign. I felt like, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe I need to do something completely new. It was the moment that I went to an interview, which ticked all the boxes. It looked an amazing job. But that person asked me the question, why do you want this job? And everything inside me wanted to say, I don't. So on the way home, I had to challenge myself. Why don't I want these jobs? What's going on? And the blog came from that. It was exploring, okay, what do you do if you want to do something different? How do you know what to do next? The book explores all the five steps. It shares case studies and all the research that I was doing, trying to find my way. So obviously I highly recommend it. And it's something that we reference throughout another door. I was really proud of the book. It was such an achievement. I had some great testimonials from people. Bruce Daisy, one of my favorite podcasts, I could highly recommend his podcast, said, Eleanor has created a book that is part survival guide, part life coach. A warm and welcoming Sherpa helping you escape the valleys of rejection bound with the peaks of opportunity. I mean, what amazing <laughs> testimony. <laughs> So yeah, okay, I'll be a Sherpa. I'll help you through the valley. <laughs> and Alex, who I work for, uh, at Tunnel 4, kindly quoted, Eleanor very thoughtfully takes the reader through all aspects of redundancy. That is a really important part for me. It's not just about, oh, here's a CV workshop. Oh, here's an interview workshop. Another door and the book is about embracing all of the emotions. And I can't stress that enough. It holds your hand on a bad day, a good day, whatever you're feeling. Here's some more Callie Beaton, the brilliant media and writer, said, a book I wish I'd had at my disposal on several occasions during my career. So many people say this. It's like a sort of manual, helps you through those moments of career change. And Viv Rosgop, who does the amazing podcast, and the book, Lift As You Climb. As a redundancy survivor, this book reminded me why an ending, especially an unexpected one, can be the best kind of beginning. I love that. That's what we want to hopefully get across today, that no matter what you're feeling, you can make this a good thing. You can decide now this is going to be the moment it changes for you. Okay, a few more little bits and pieces. We've been featured in all kinds of amazing media. 
with the book, with what we offer, with my coaching. I've had some great articles I write myself and I also get interviewed by some fantastic journalists and podcasters. So please go to anotherdoor.co.uk and you'll find some of these examples here. And again, they may be just little pieces of wisdom that really help you on your journey. So far, we've helped over 700 people through the doors. They're all doing all sorts of different things right now. Out into the world, they lost their job, they've gone through the experience and they've decided, okay, what's new? So let's crack on. That's a little bit of our background, but now this is your time. So create some space, shake it out and get ready to explore how you can make losing your job the best thing that ever happened to you. Okay, step one, we're in shock. You've had the bad news and of course it's okay to feel not okay about it. You don't have to pretend, you don't have to push through, you can feel all the feelings. And that's the most important message when you've lost your job. It's gonna be emotional. We draw the curve ball curve, where you can feel so many different emotions, sometimes all at once because it's exactly that, it's a curveball. You weren't expecting it. You haven't been training for it. You haven't been preparing for it. It's just come out of the blue and now you're having to work through it. Of course you are gonna work through it. Of course you are. And you're gonna help yourself get through it. But there just may be some bumps along the way. So don't worry if you wake up one day and you had, have a bad day, that's completely normal. Tell yourself that's okay. It's part of the process. It's okay to wallow a bit. You have to look after yourself. You have to put you at number one now. Keep yourself active. It's too easy just to wallow in bed all day. No, get out, get walking, move. Keep your brain active. Check in with what you're eating. Again, how many of us lie on the sofa wallowing, eating those hobnobs, drinking too much coffee? Check in with yourself. Maybe challenge yourself to eat a bit more healthily. And of course, try and get sleep. Now, I do understand sleep is a tricky one. It's time. Do all you can to help yourself. Don't do that scrolling last thing at night. Put your phone away. Don't drink lots of coffee after six o'clock. We know what's gonna happen when you do. Try and eat before seven o'clock. That's a tried and tested piece of advice that really works. And just make it okay. If you do wake up and you're feeling worried that you get up and just read something or distract your mind, don't beat yourself up about not sleeping. That makes it worse. Okay, so might sound obvious, but keep checking in with yourself. Are you looking after yourself? Okay, so step one is about not beating yourself up, about being in shock, feeling all the emotions, and putting yourself first to really look after yourself. That's the foundations. Once you're in that space, you might say, okay, I'm feeling ready to move on, but I'm just not sure how. Keep having all of these ideas, but I just don't know what to do. So the feeling of stuck is actually a good thing. It's a sign that you're ready to move on and you're gonna take the right steps. So you're already in a good place if you're feeling stuck. The first message is when you're feeling stuck, you might be tempted is to look and apply for all the jobs that are very, very much the same as what you've been doing. It's kind of your comfort zone. Now that might be okay, but in another door, we just want to challenge you a little bit more to do the right thing for you in your next move. You're more than a job title. And we're going to encourage you to explore that. 
How do you want to live? What do you really want to be doing? What would be your perfect job? So whilst a job title might be helpful, it also might be holding you back. A job title might also be part of your problem, it might be an ego thing. You just need that next job title to get you back in comfort zone because you're feeling a bit vulnerable without it. Now, is that the right reason? Challenge yourself on why you're applying for the jobs you're applying for. Are they really what you want? Are they really what you need? Have a think about why do you do what you do? This is where you can do some scribbling. Do you do the job you do because you love it? Because you're trained in it? Because you're skilled at it? Do you do it for the money, for the reward? Do you do it because you believe it? Why do you do what you do? And is that right? Do you want to change something? Is this a moment when you actually say, actually, I want to retrain. Actually, I want to earn more money. Actually, I want to earn less money and I want more freedom. Why do you do what you do? Challenge everything today. This is where we're at. Don't assume you know the answers. Really think about why you do what you do. It might help you to really think about your career in the past, your whole journey. Think about where you started. What was the first job you ever had? Write it down. Why were you doing that? Then what happened? Why did you change jobs? Was it a big change? Was it an opportunity? Then what happened? What did you do next? Really think back to the sliding door moments in your career when there were milestones, things changed for you. Think about the people, think about what you were doing. Make notes on the moments in time in your career when you've absolutely loved it. What was happening then? And make notes of moments in time in your career when you hated it. What was happening then? Your career journey can give you clues to what you wanna do next. So it's really worth spending a bit of time on this. Either pause the webinar now or start it and come back to it. I always tell people, give at least half an hour to this. Really good thinking time where you're mapping out your whole journey and the moments that counted into where you are today. Then have a look and say, okay, how do I want this to continue? What things am I gonna bring into the future with me? What things do I want to leave behind? The next thing that we look at in the Another Door program, and probably usually we give this at least half a day, is the life priority wheel. Now you might have seen this if you've had coaching before or you've worked with a life coach. What we actually call it in the Another Door program is a life dashboard. And if you've read the book, then you'll have already perhaps had some ideas on it. The reason why, we think it's important not to just think about your career, but think about your whole life is because it's all connected. And it's really important to tune into where you're putting focus and therefore where you're not putting focus. So you could then you can pause the webinar and do a little bit more on this, or you can come back to it at another date. But I strongly urge you to look at the life wheel Scribble what's going on for you in each part of your life. The good things, the things you'd like to work more on, things that are missing. 
scribble in all of those sections. It looks maybe a little bit like this. And think about, okay, what am I prioritizing? If you had to rank these in order, what does that look like? Where are your priorities? And then challenge yourself. Where do you want your priorities to be? What would you really like this to look like in a few years' time? Pause the webinar if you need a little bit more time to scribble. For the sake of time today, we're going to keep moving. So we've had a look at your career journey, your life priority wheel, where you are right now, what your goals might be. Maybe in each one of these areas you have a goal, or maybe there's just one or two that you want to focus on. Be as clear as possible with your goal. And then really start to think about what's holding you back from living that way now, or what's holding you back from achieving that goal now. Is it money? Is it fear? Is it skills? Is it circumstances? Are you just getting in your way? Sit with that question for a while. You've outlined your goal, some of the things you would like to achieve. What is it really that's holding you back from doing that? There is a world of options and opportunities out there for you. Sometimes it's just us that gets in the way. That's where it's useful to have good people around you that are really helping and encouraging you to take steps, to take action, and to see yourself in a whole different way. If we spent an hour together, and you told me all about what you've just gone through, your career journey, your goals, I could at least come up with five hidden talents that I think could make perfect another door for you. Obviously, you would have to decide if they were right for you, if they ticked all your boxes, but there would be options. You always have choice and you always have options. Sometimes that's the problem. Maybe there's too many options, too many choices. So how do you work through it? Step three is all around slow, slow go. So actually, you kind of go against the just do it kind of thing, you know, leap before you think. All that. No, we actually say, no, slow down a little bit, pause, get a bit of clarity, really tune into understanding why you might want to do something and then go. Then make your move with intention and with purpose. So let's sit with these questions for a while. What do you want to do? When you see that question, what's the first thing that springs into your mind? Write that down and capture it. Why do you want to do it? Why is it important to you? Play around with this idea of you might not have to have all the answers right now, but you always have a first idea, a first response. When someone asks you, oh, what do you want to do now? You will always have a thought. Capture the thought and explore it. Play with it. See what comes up. Keep challenging yourself on why you want to do something. What is it that intrigues you? What is it that's drawing you to that? Why is it important? Challenge yourself and keep asking why, 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 why do you want to do this? Be really specific with yourself. Don't leave broad questions. Explore it. So if you've written down a little 
idea or a big idea, go into detail. Be very specific. I would love to do this because X, Y, Z. It brings me money. It will bring me more joy. It will create more time with my family. It will help me travel the world. It will give me new skills. You know, be really specific on what you're wanting from change or from the idea or what you want to do next. Don't be afraid to write down crazy things as well. You know, I want to write a book. I want to start a blog. I want to change the world. Why not? Be specific with your intention. You have got choices. When we create change, you have three choices. If you have read the book, this is in a bit more detail, and we certainly go through this in more detail in the program. Stick, twist, bust. First choice you have is to stick with what you do, stick to your expertise, but we want to challenge you to upgrade, upgrade how you do it, upgrade, upgrade where you do it, maybe who you do it for. So maybe a similar job, but for an organization you've always wanted to work for. What are your dream organizations? Who do you admire? Maybe it's flexible working. Maybe it's location. You want to be closer to home. Maybe you want to work for an amazing manager that you can learn from. So if you were to stick, but upgrade, what does that look like for you? The second choice is twist. Stick to your expertise. You know what you're doing there. You are the expert, but twist it. Maybe you become a consultant. Maybe you become freelance. Maybe you teach it. Maybe you coach it. Maybe you start some sort of community from your expertise. You twist what you do. And then the third choice is bust. You're going to bust out everything you know, everything you've ever done. You're going to do something completely different. You're going to be so far in an uncomfortable zone, it's going to be amazing. Do that new job. Go and retrain. Go and be whatever you've always wanted to be. So stick, twist, bust is your three choices. The reason why it's important you to really explore this is because each one comes with different challenges. Each one comes with pros and cons. There'll be some amazing reasons why to do things and there'll be some more practical things why not maybe. So have a play with what are you gonna do? Stick, twist or bust. And that'll bring you into step four. You know what you want to do, stick, twist or bust. You know the idea, you've got a sense of what that could be, but how do you start? What is the first step in starting? Okay, so we're going to have to make a plan. I always say to people, make a mini plan. You don't have to have a huge, great Gantt chart. You certainly do not need 60 pages of PowerPoint. But make a little plan, write yourself down a few dates. I would like to be doing X by this time, or I would like to be earning X by this date, or I would like to be in this position by then. So make it a really simple plan. A couple of things you're gonna do, maybe just on one page, and that will help you keep focused. The second thing you're going to do is start to create your story. If you've already gone through some of this process, you've already read the book maybe, you've probably already started creating it. Why do you want this job? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to start something new? You've already started to create your story. Therefore, when you meet people, whether it is informally or formally, you can connect with them. And they can start to do the work for you. This is the magic. If you can say, hey, I want to start a project management company. Do you know anybody who's looking for project managers? They can, you can almost start to market just through word of mouth by creating a strong story. So what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And be really clear on that. 
and that'll help you through interviews, it'll help you through pitches, and it'll help you to get your first step on your either new business or into your new job. And the third thing is place to start. Now a tribe is a little bit different to network. Network, you might have friends and family, and that's all great. It's a support network around you. Tribe is more around people who are going to be helping you solely for the part to get you to help you through this goal. Help you through this journey. They maybe have done it themselves. They maybe have expertise in what you're interested in. They could be a role model. Start to build a tribe. Who are you following? on social media, who, who are you reading? What podcasts are you listening to? What kind of local groups are there? Maybe business groups or community groups you can join. That's how you start to build a tribe who talk the same language, who are thinking in the same way. And you can then start to feel confident through hearing that. You can also start building connections. And that again, could be where you find your first job, the next client. So make that plan. Be bold on your why and your what. Mind map and prioritize all of what's going on, all what you think you need to do. And really challenge yourself in the prioritization. No, number one priority is not to make a website. I beg of you, please do not put number one, create a website. So many people join another door <laughs> or come and coach with me and this is what they've been working on for the last six months their website that is not going to get you your next step or they have maybe been working on their cv that's the equivalent when you want a job do the work on challenging yourself on why and what and talking to people and getting out there and connecting that's where opportunity lies it's not in a cv and it's not in a website so map out all your ideas, put them, get them all out there so they're not hanging around just in your head, but then prioritize. And be wise and challenging on your prioritization. I like this prioritize being a SWAT. So really challenge yourself on the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then step four is obviously small achievable steps. You know, the smaller something is, Set yourself a little goal every single day, maybe every week. And bit by bit, you can step forward without it feeling overwhelming. And that's all we encourage sometimes in another door. Just one thing a day you're going to do, you'll commit to doing it. And it will just feel great. How good will it feel after a month? You know, you've been doing this for four weeks. How much pace you can have made in small steps. The SWAT thing is a really good idea. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and you've had lots of, you know, maybe generated lots of ideas and now you're thinking, okay, I do need to take some um, ideas forward. This is a good kind of way of exploring it. And we all know SWAT, we all know kind of strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, threats, but explore it in a different way as well. You know, you get your confidence from your strength. So what are the things that you'll feel confident about that you can just do now? You know, you can maybe pick up the phone to somebody. You maybe can post something on social media. You can maybe start something because you're really confident about it. Weaknesses might be, you know, you're a little bit more worried about it, a bit more concerned. You might just need a little bit more time to work on something. Opportunities are possibilities. You know, they're things that will, what if? Never be afraid to live in the land of what if. What if we're willing to try something? They might not have all the answers, but it's a possibility. And then obviously threats. Well, they're barriers. What are the things that maybe you're just not feeling ready for and you're pushing against it, not feeling quite right, but you don't want to lose them. Maybe you're feeling like you need to do a bit more research. So have an explore of this and plot it out and then pick off a few of the things that you've put in your confidence square. And then have a look at the other squares and think, well, how can you move that into the confidence? What, what things can you do that will help you move those, some of those other things into the confidence square? I think this is a really nice exercise to do when you've got lots of things going around in your head, maybe lots of post-it notes, 
and you're wanting a way to organize them and but you're feeling like they're almost stopping you so have a play with this and see if this helps you take the first step what can you do today that'll help you move forward okay so exploring your story let's do this in a little bit more detail really think about okay who are you so if someone says oh hi great to meet you who, who are you what do you say it's what you do it's how you say it and it's maybe what you stand for how do you introduce yourself have a little think about the last time you met somebody maybe at networking or someone new how did you introduce yourself Start to challenge that and think about how do you need to tell your story in the future that's going to really help you to step through that next door with confidence. Hello, I'm Eleanor. I run another door. If you need support to help you change career, come and speak to me. Hi, I am a project manager. I'm looking for new work. Hey, if you know anybody with any opportunities, would love to speak to them. Thank you. Now, it can be really simple. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can be just one sentence that's your comfort blanket, which really helps you when you're stepping forward. So think about today. What's your simple story? And the final thing, let's dig a little bit deeper on this creating the tribe. We mentioned it before. Tribe, it might not be your friends and family. In fact, check in with this one. Check in with where your energy is. Who are the people that are helping you along? Are there some people from a long, long time ago that can help you now? Surround yourself with people who get it. <laughs> it looks like IT, doesn't it? It's not like obviously you get IT, although that might help you as well. But, you know, who are the people that cheer you on? The people who are like, yes, let's do this. That's brilliant. Not the people who would get worried for you. Not the people who think it's a stupid idea. Although listen to everybody. They might have some good counsel for you. But it doesn't mean you have to get drawn into toxic or negative energy. So really checking with who are you spending time with? Are they your supporters? The giving or taking? Who are the energy sources? Where are they? Where are you getting energy from? And where are you giving your energy to? Challenge this. It could be a biggie. You might be keeping yourself space for somebody else. You might be protecting somebody else's ideas or opinions on what you should be doing. So have a think about it. This brings us to step five. You've got your plan, you're making steps, small steps forward. You are ready to make your move and thrive. But what does that even mean? Is it success? Are we done? So we get to step five and we're done? No. <laughs> because thriving is not always thriving and being successful. To me, success is actually about understanding that you're going to have bad days all the time. You're going to have these days when you feel like giving up. It's about accepting some of the things you can do right now and accepting some of the things you can't. It's about how to handle rejection and know that's part of the process. You do not have to fear rejection. We have a great free workshop on another door, which is all about rejection. Please go and check that out if you're feeling down about constantly being rejected you don't need to feel like that it's just part of the process it means you're trying it means you're having a go and you're getting yourself out there and when you do that it does mean you're going to fail sometimes you are going to get some things wrong sometimes you'll learn from them sometimes it is just something you got wrong and that's okay keep going get back up take the next step and the last part, part of this, thriving is about giving yourself a break. That's the most important part. Stop beating yourself up. You're doing the best you can. The fact that you've bothered to take time to listen to this webinar, to do the thinking, explore some of these questions, it means you're giving this a good
good go. In fact, you're doing more than that. You're doing more than the average person who's out there looking for a job. You're really thinking about how can I make this a good thing? And it means that you will help yourself to do it. So remember that on a bad wobble day. Actually, you're ahead of the crowd. You wanting this to be a good thing. It'll mean you'll do the work that, that means that you'll make it happen. That is what thriving is about. So we've been through the five steps to thrive. You may have all sorts of ideas whirling around right now, but let's think about this. What is your ideal tomorrow? What is it when everything happens for you? So you get up tomorrow and what happens that makes you think, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Please don't say win the lottery. Everyone says that. No, don't do that to yourself. Don't challenge yourself. Be bigger than that. What is it really? Oh, fine. If you are in the lottery, go and do the lottery. That's fine. But really, you know, come on, take ownership. <laughs> This time next year, what would be amazing? I want you to write this down on a piece of paper. If you've got a notebook, write it down. Five amazing things that could happen tomorrow that would make you go, whoa. And if everything came good, this time next year, what would you be doing? We do an amazing exercise in the Another Door program, which really explores this. It's about an hour long. But again, we really, really take you into this space of understanding what a perfect day looks like and challenging ourselves as to why. Why do we think that that's perfect? Because even if you said, I'm okay, winning the lottery, why is that? Why is that perfect? Because do you know what? I think there's a really interesting stat of maybe 60% of people who win the lottery are not happy. They lose the money straight away because they have not done the work on really understanding what it is that drives happiness, what it is that's perfect day for you. So do the work now when you do win the lottery, <laughs> then, you know, you'll make it a good thing. So let's think about this. We've had an experience. It's been half an hour of me throwing questions at you, disrupting your thoughts. I hope that you're feeling like, wow, this is going to be good. And then feeling like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't worry, that's part of it. But what is the one thing that you're going to do today? I want you to really think about one thing you can do today. Why is it important to you? Why are you going to do it? I'm going to do this because. Think about everything we've talked about today. I want you to own it. I want you to own that next door you're going to walk through. And I want you to make it the best thing that ever happened. Thank you so much for experiencing this webinar with me. If something is holding you back, challenge it, challenge it again and get rid of it or live with it. If you read Elizabeth Gilbert's amazing big magic book, she says, just live with it. But please don't step forward because of it. Remember that curveball. It's okay to feel all the emotions. You do not have to be happy, smiley, positive every day. You are feeling whatever you're feeling every day, and that's okay. Work with your emotions. That is probably the more accurate curveball. <laughs> Ball of string. Ball of spaghetti. That's how it feels, and that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about not feeling good every single day. Just take small steps to move forward and own them. Final point, don't do it alone. Of course, I want you to join another door, then you won't be alone, but you could also find somebody to talk to who understands. Maybe it's not, you know, think about the tribe thing we talk about. Maybe it's not 
your closest friends and family. It could be somebody else. But find someone you can chat through, change your mind, tell them when you're having a bad day. Don't do it alone. Thank you so much for watching the webinar. If you want more support, of course, I want you to join the club. That's what it's all about. Giving you a taster. I mean, that was just half an hour. When you join the club in the five steps to thrive, we send you a question out every day. Now you might think, oh my goodness, the question every day. That's all it is. Sit with a question for at least 10 minutes a day for five weeks and you will get real change in your life. That is what the club is all about. We know what we're doing with this. We've designed it around the experience of losing your job or career changing. And it works with you where you're at right now. Whatever your emotions, the shock, the frustration, the anger, the upset, the panic, it starts there. The whole club is about encouragement, guidance, advice, and a sounding board. Sometimes you just want somebody to bounce an idea off. No matter how silly you feel it is, you just need somebody to run it past. That's what we're about. We're about a tried and tested framework that reduces overwhelm gets you clarity and reframes how you feel. So we take all of that emotion and we put it into good energy. It's almost like a recycling of energy to create something good out of the struggle that you may be feeling right now. When you join, you get instant enrollment onto the five step to thrive experience. And you'll start going through it. There are modules which you can access at any time. So that's your pace at your time when you need it, you work through it. Most of the people that go through this probably experience change and a penny drop moment within three or four days. We get messages from people saying, I've just had a moment. <laughs> you also get one-to-one -one coaching, which is amazing. With a career coach, you can book that at a time that works for you. You get the job search and confidence clinic and that will really help you with your CV, interview skills, whatever you're getting stuck on in your job search strategy. And also online, you get the toolkits. And again, you can watch a half an hour session on how to prep for an interview and what to do with your LinkedIn. This is all good stuff that people constantly come back to us and say, wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Watch that in 20 minutes, now for ready to go. If you've got a business idea, the startup kit is perfect. It's really gentle, it's really easy to follow. You just go through an idea wheel and it'll help you to decide is it the right thing for you to do or not. You get all this straight away when you join. Probably if you booked it with us separately, it's worth 1,250 pounds. The coaching alone, when we do executive coaching, could be worth that. When you join the club, it's £300. It's one payment, that's all it is, and then you are part of another door. And that's it. We will be there to help you. Give us a shout. Work through all of the process, all of the toolkits. Jump on coaching calls. Join in some of the workshops that we run on a monthly basis and you will get the change that you need. You'll get the support you need and you don't have to feel stuck anymore. We would love to have you join. Make your CV worries go away today. Use LinkedIn to find your next job. You don't have to be afraid of LinkedIn. We will encourage you to get on there and use it. It's a great friendly platform. And you can learn how to do it in another door. More importantly, I guess, than all of that is knowing exactly what you want to do next and creating a plan to succeed, knowing how you're going to do it. So don't be alone with your next step. Join another door club. We will help you all the way. Thank you so much for tuning into this webinar really enjoyed it if you need anything more please drop us a note join the club today and you will get instant help. thank you